Um, so just give me a run.
everybody. There we go. One layer, two layers. Good afternoon. I got a whole roll. We're all set. We're gonna see this through. COVID-19, we're gonna see this through. And uh, just gonna wrap ourselves up in this stuff. Put a couple air buckets in there. Little mask. Got my t-shirt from um, Turf Tender. There it is. Right? Stop. Keep back six feet. Social distancing, save lives. And that's my kit. That's the kit I'm putting together. Um, a little water. And off we go. Well, good afternoon. Happy May Day. And uh, well, I'm, I'm away from everybody now. So I, will, I could take that off. And I'm keeping my social distance. And I hear music. And happy May Day. And uh, you know, this morning, coming to work, there was nobody on the road. And something about the weather, the sun starts to warm up. All of a sudden, there's cars all over the place. It's amazing. So that's why we've been talking about, you know, sort of as the weather warms up, the pressure for some things to be open, I think, will, um, will continue. So uh, yes, good afternoon. I have my mask. I have a pink couple of uh, so Several people made pink flamingo masks for us. Um, I had some other masks. To, uh, we circulated them around City Hall today. And um, what else? Uh, we're beginning to put up plexiglass. Uh, people paying taxes today, banging on the doors, leaving things in the mailbox. Don't forget you can pay your taxes and bills online at www.lemonster-ma.gov. Do you have to say the www? It's, it, it doesn't change. It's not like an LLL or a KKK or CCC or a DDD, right? It's, it's all really simple, right? It's, it's lemonster-ma.gov or dash if you like. But anyway, we got plenty of bubble wrap here. Sooner or later, I think um, we'll all be in this stuff and no one will have to worry about anything. Um, I was looking through some numbers today. All of Northwester County, going as far out as Royalston, Athol, Petersham. Let's go the other way to Winchington, Ashburnham, Ashby, towns in which all border New Hampshire. Let's go Groton and Ayr and Harvard and Lancaster, which about like the Worcester area, West Boylston and all. Sterling, Lummins, Lunenburg, Fitchburg, Westminster, Gardner, Templeton, Phillipston, and Hubbardston. Put all of those communities together, and we have about 1,200 test positives um, in all of North Worcester County. So um, I, I know people are scratching their heads saying now there's, uh, now you have to wear masks. Uh, so let me just explain that. If you didn't hear the governor's press conference today, um, they're requiring uh, everyone to wear a mask unless you can social distance. So that means if you're um, going to be in a store somewhere or you're going to be in a place where maybe it's not possible to keep or you're worried about proper uh, social distancing, then you need to wear <clears throat> a mask. So I'm all set. Got my shirt, my bubble wrap, toilet paper. Got a roll of toilet paper over there. I got my mask, some water. I'm all set to go. Ready to go. We're going to take this on. We'll have the numbers for you as soon as we get them. I don't think uh, we had them yet, but we will tell you emergency management is open now and they'll be open tomorrow. I think Jim said 8 to 12 at 978-534-7500, extension 5055. So we have thousands of masks. They're three layered masks. <clears throat> and so um, now it, it, I guess the, the state had received masks that were from China, and apparently instead of being 95s when they were tested, they were only 25% efficient, so they had to take them all back. And then um, one of our deputies went down to Framingham today to get the new ones, which are the correct ones. So now in order to give these masks out, they need to be certified by either Draper Labs or Lincoln Labs. And so all this is going on, it creates a little bit of an embarrassing situation. So we have thousands of masks to give out, but the donor, um, obviously wants to be to protected, doesn't want someone to say they get sick from their mask or something happened, and as a result gets um, somebody files a claim. So the donor asked us if we would just assume all the liability. Our lawyers say, well, we're not sure we want to do that. What if, what if, what if, and that's their job. Anyway, I think we got this thing resolved, and we will have masks. If I have to go get them tonight or tomorrow, we will, whatever needs to be done, uh, a generous donor is uh, making that donation to us. We also hooked them up with the 
town uh, with the city of Marlboro and several others. So uh, we'll be getting these masks. And what a perfect time after the governor has this press conference and says everybody's got to have a mask on. But again, read um, the press release if you can, because um, I know what we're going to do is we're going to end up getting phone calls now because somebody's going to be walking down the street without a mask. Um, that's not what it says. It says if you can't keep proper social distancing, six feet. My rule is like eight to ten feet. Yeah, I'm not going near anybody. I don't care who you are within eight to ten feet. But if you can't and there's some reason that you can't, then put your mask on. And today we had the birthday parade for Lieutenant Ciccone and a number of uh, his family and just uh, friends showed up. Uh, had to be 100 people there. But everybody was masked. Everybody kept their social distance. I want to thank the Massachusetts State Police for coming out. Um, we asked, we said, if there's anybody in the neighborhood that could come out, please do. They sent, uh, I think, anybody east, uh, west of 495 showed up. And it was brief, but they showed up. And uh, we thanked them for, for coming out. Uh, I think in the police world, we know there aren't many of those left at 97 years old. We still have Frenchie Arell. He's got to be, uh, you know, I don't know if he wants me to say his age, but let's just say he's a... Uh, uh, he, he's, he's, he's around there, but prob probably around in his 80s. I would say late 80s. Uh, 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 um, Pulsifer, Officer Pulsifer, uh, he's still around. I gotta assume he was 60 when I started the police department, and uh, I gotta assume he's up in his 80s. And then Jim DePerry the first, uh, who had a son, Jim uh, DePerry, and now they have, uh, and Jim Sr. has a uh, grandson on the police department, so three generations there, maybe more. And let's see, I'm trying to think of who else. That, that, that's that's the, the only ones that I can remember that are st still alive that are that uh, up in that age group. And then you get the uh, 80s and the 70s and the 60s. And so, so anyway, uh, a great uh, show today of uh, support. I know Ronnie was going to grab some film, so maybe next week we'll show that. But it was quite impressive. And again, had my mask on, got to go over and see Lieutenant Ciccone and one of his sons, uh, Charlie, my classmate from uh, Lumister High, 75, uh, is living in Florida, couldn't get here, but his son Paul and uh, Sal and his uh, beautiful wife uh, was there as well. Lieutenant Ciccone and his wife still, like two high school kids. So it was really nice to see them and nice to see a um, tribute to them and, uh, in good fashion. He, uh, he was appreciative. So anyway, we'll, we'll let you know. I'll let you know the second I can. I'll post it. You share it as fast as you can, and we'll begin to get uh, people masks. How it'll work is probably uh, have people show up and, and just sit in their cars, and we will get masks, and I guess you get in a line, and we'll figure out how to do it, right? And safely, and uh, we'll get people masks. So uh, if, if somebody's just walking down the street and they don't have a mask on or they're going for a run or whatever it might be, it does not say that they have to be masks. It says if you can't keep your social distancing, um, then, then throw that mask on, right? And I have a friend, and she says that she's making masks so that it doesn't, so my problem is I wear my glasses, and obviously the, the moisture goes up, and then I can't see. And so supposedly there's some fabric, I guess, that, um, that you can use that, I guess, the air does something. It disintegrates or it absorbs it whatever it might be. Hey, thank you for watching all week. Everyone's been great sharing, helping me to share good information. I was on a chamber uh, Zoom today with about 20 or so members of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, good dialogue, great ideas, great, uh, great uh, uh, questions. And again, uh, we attribute to our success here, I think, in, in uh, Leominster, at least in North Worcester County, to good communicating, good cooperation, right? If you cooperate and we get good cooperation and we get uh, a good communication as to the correct information, then things do work out better. Um, we don't know what time they're going to be done. Um, yeah, we can use those grabbers to kind of hand them out. We'll have a robot hand them out. We'll get one of those robots from Stop and Shop. Have you seen one of those? Yeah, we'll get, uh, we'll get the kids from the CTE down here from the uh, robotic program, and we'll uh, get a robot, and we'll hand them out. How's that? Is that pretty good? Wash your glasses with shaving cream. Uh, it will help with the fog. Are you serious? I'll try it. But if that's the case, okay with me. I'll give it a shot. Um, let's see. Any questions? If you're in a mood for questions today, 
If not, uh, we got bubble wrap. We could just sit here and for the next hour and sort of bubble wrap pop. Who doesn't like that? Jack Sully, I bet you could do about four hours of just popping bubbles here. And, and everyone would stay amused just by looking at Jack and watching him pop bubbles. There you go. Okay, phone number is 978-534-7500-5055. About a half a day tomorrow in the morning, half a day on Sunday, and then they'll be back full time uh, in the afternoon. We'll give you the numbers as soon as we get them. As I said, a total since this all started, 1,200 cases in all of North Worcester County. That says something, right? It says that you're doing your job and uh, cooperating in spreading the correct info. Don't forget to uh, apply for unemployment benefits, mass.gov forward slash DUA. For self-employed contractor unemployment benefits, mass.gov forward slash PUA. Yes, we'll get them to whoever we need to get them to. That's, you know, th those most vulnerable population, yes. But honestly, uh, my friend is donating enough to probably do the entire city. So uh, it's just a matter of getting them to, to everyone. And w obviously, we can't just give them out to EMA. We'll have other places we can give them out. And uh, if the supermarkets want to give them out, again, it becomes a liability for some, you know, some people panic when they hear uh, that somebody's donating something and nobody wants to carry the liability on it. So we'll give them to as many people as we can, but we will have thousands. Hey, Ronnie, did you get any good film from the uh, Lieutenant Ciccone's birthday today? Um, just wondering. I, I, I got all kind of... To be honest with you, the, the way the day was going, I thought it was at 1.45. And it's a good thing the chief called me and said, hey, we're up at the Eagles. I'm like, we changed our location to the Eagles. And I said, it's a good thing you told me because I wasn't going to be there for another hour. Question, on Monday, we have to uh, get, uh, get packing, K through 8. Who do we turn them to? I'm not sure. I would call the school department. They have people working there. They can answer your phone call. I don't know the answer to that in terms of the uh, school department questions. I do not know the answer to that. But I think if you call there, um, they will help you out. Business questions, as always, uh, today, uh, we're very excited. Still working on the newsletter. It should go out later today or early tonight. And if you have any questions at all on anything business related, um, again, we talked and spoke with the Chamber of Commerce members today. And uh, they have a website, notcentralmass.com. Oz is lumbus-ma.gov, uh, masstech.org, um, also sba.gov. That's so all of those sites are there to help you as businesses. But if you need to call us, feel free to give us a buzz at 978-534-7500, extension uh, zero. And we will help you out in any way that we possibly can. Even if it's not our area of concern, we'll still help you out. Red Cross is still looking for blood. Uh, LumistaLibrary.org to download your, um, well, just you can pretty much download anything today, right? Library of Congress, just about anything. And Lumister-MA.gov for Conservation uh, Commission activities. Their bear hunt, there's still people with bears out there, still got addresses online, and you want to grab those, that's fine. Um, yes, I think she's ask, asking about packets. United Way, uh, well, they're off for the week now, but they'll be back next week. But uh, Catholic Charities, also off for the week, but they'll be back on Monday. Uh, Ginny's Food Pantry, uh, we've developed a partnership with. It's going really well. Our emergency management volunteers are helping to deliver food. But anyway, they're there tomorrow. But also Tuesday through Saturdays now from 10 to 1. So just call 978-537-1387, and they will help you out with whatever needs that you have. Um, I think I'll hold off on the numbers till we get them. Um, let me just go to my, make sure. Okay, so we do have numbers. Hang on one second, and I will share those with you. Okay, so uh, Friday, state numbers are total cases in Massachusetts, 64,311. Uh, that's up about 2,000. What's the county? 5,787, that's up 237 cases. Total tested, we're now up to 290,000 people who are tested. That's incredible. I mean, we're, and today they did 14,000 tests. That is by far the most amount ever. Deaths are at 3,716, that's 154. Yesterday we were at 157. No, one is too many, obviously, right? One is way too many, but um, at least 
now um, that number is sort of stabilizing. Let's hope, let's hope that those uh, numbers uh, continue to drop and hospitalization rate continues to be at 6%. Uh, yes, the only place that you could give blood right now, um, Joyce, is Worcester. That's the only place. And if you want, I can give you the phone number. It's 1-800-RED-CROSS, or you can go to redcross.org backslash or forward slash Massachusetts. I want to thank Ross and Kim. Stop over to see them today at Infinite Design and uh, the home of the succulent plant, which continues to multiply. I didn't know that. Succulent plants multiply. I was given a lesson today by Kim. And uh, good to see them both, and got a chance to personally thank them. But they had just refurbished, uh, donated, uh, people have donated uh, laptops. They refurbished those. Thank you to those that were able to donate them. They refurbished them. We had, uh, they had charges with them. And we will be able to donate those, um, those electronic devices to five students here in the city of Lemonster who otherwise would never have a chance to get a electronic device. And they're like new. They refurbish them. And they're, they're actually better than new because they're done with love. Ah, I don't know. I had, Marianne, I had, um, I started to look like my father, I guess, is what's happened. I saw a picture the other day, and I'm like, yeah, this is the, this is the, this is the time when you start to look, right? You start to get, you know, the same characteristics, and we, we, we definitely have the, had the same hairdo. I don't know. I think I'll keep it long. Who knows, right? Um, I might even shave it off at one point. If there was a good cause, I would shave it off, but I'm one of those people that if you saw me with no hair, it ain't pretty. There's people that look really good with it, but yeah, I thought of the flow B. I'm just going to hang in there for, uh, you know, let's see, it's another three weeks. I'm sure they'll add another two weeks to that. So it really, it, it's, it can only grow so long, right? Um, yeah, we're going to get through this. Of course we are. You've got to just add a little dab of, uh, it's like honey, right? You add a little dab to anything, right? Cough medicine, anything, and helps the medicine go down. So we just keep our wits about us, and, uh, and that's how we're getting through this, right? I mean, that's really, um, that's how people, I, I hear these funny things that people say and do, and I just, um, it makes me smile. People have done some really interesting things. We are still at 127 per 100,000, which makes us um, lower if you're looking at it that way, in terms of cases, 127 per 100,000, we are up probably third or fourth from the bottom. One, two, three, yep. So the only people less than us are Dartmouth, Andover, and Amherst. Amherst population has dropped by half, and the other communities are about 10,000, 5,000, 6,000, smaller than us. So um, we're at 147,000 per, 127,000 per 100,000. We're at 127 per 100,000 uh, cases, so that is the uh, smallest of any city uh, our size in the Massachusetts. So we just got to keep up this work, right? You've got car racing coming up on TV, no spectators, growing places, has some office uh, fresh produce on Wednesdays, 11 to 1 at the senior centers. Yes, absolutely. Um, if you like a Chromebook or a computer, so the school department has some. But uh, the ones that we have are going to students that where there's no computer in the house and the student would otherwise never have an opportunity. And if you're interested, you can call our office at 978-534-7500, extension zero. They'll ask you a few questions and then we'll hook you up and we have more coming. So we are asking a few questions because we really want to make sure they get into the right hands. Uh, we had people donate tens of thousands of dollars, and we promised we'd make sure they get into the right hands. And so we are keeping with that uh, promise. Yes, uh, you can purchase from Growing Places on uh, Wednesdays at the Senior Center, and then, on, uh, and then later on in the day, you can purchase over at the new park on Mechanic Street, which is coming out just beautiful. So everybody in Massachusetts, this is uh, sort of from the you know, notes from the governor's news conference. Uh, in Massachusetts, wear face, mac wear face mask covering in public, including in businesses, outdoors, or on public transportation, if they're unable to socially distance themselves from other people. Did you get that? Please don't panic when you see somebody walking or running down the street who, um, who doesn't have a mask because um, they don't need one. 
they just need one when you can't social distance, right? Or, or if you are still close to people, or you're shopping, but you're still six to eight feet away and you still want to wear a mask, that's fine. Testing rate is 17% of those tested are um, now testing positive. This is down from 30% and earlier in the month of April. Uh, 7 million PPEs have now been delivered, PPE standing for personal protection equipment. Contract tracing, uh, they've hired 1,000 people, so somebody gets tested positive and they go back and find out that circle of friends or relatives. Um, so all of that happening. If you're just tuning in, and uh, it's Friday afternoon, we made it. Week seven, we're gonna start in week eight. What happens in week eight? You asked me to reach into my, uh, look into my crystal ball. We've been pretty accurate with everything. I've been going through my notes to see what exactly I said would happen. And, you know, it's just human behavior. It's, it's no different than anything else. So next week, um, gets warmer. Um, the uh, op Let's open things uh, intensifies for the governor and the lieutenant governor. Might be why they are trying to get everybody conditioned to wear masks because they realize, uh, and I'm saying this from my, I don't have any inside track on this, but uh, I think they're understanding. It would be, uh, I'm just suspecting and commenting on this, that uh, they're preparing for the onslaught of pressure to begin to, to open some things, not all things, baby steps, remember? Little baby steps, stick your neck out, kind of look around the corner, right? Remember the kids cross the street for the first time? Roll their bikes down the street for the first time? Just get them to go a little bit. Stand out there at the curb and kind of look both ways. Little baby steps. But uh, the pressure is going to mount. We're going to have days now into the 60s, maybe into the 70s. And uh, people are going to be out. And so good move maybe by them to say, OK, we realize you're going to be out, but can you wear a mask? If you wear a mask and uh, you, you need to be close to people, then um, let's get you ready for that, right? That could be the case. I'm suspecting that's the case. But pressure is mounting. All you have to do is watch the news conferences, hear the level of questions, and then see just the questions that are posted on Facebook as, uh, as they have their press conference. Uh, let's see. There's an advisory committee of 11 business leaders and three municipal leaders uh, has been set up to come up with a plan for reopening. All you have to do is come here. We have our plan to reopen. It is baby steps. I can't stress that enough. Outdoor seating, uh, businesses. I know I'll have a uh, gallon of sanitizer out front, gloves for people if they want, uh, limited to how many people would be in the building at the, at the same time or the store, uh, which is the case for most of us small businesses. There aren't a whole lot of people that are in, in there at once. It's not like the holidays or anything. Uh, but people can also be cautious too. And uh, so, we're ready, and should the governor uh, open things even gradually, we're ready to go. And our businesses have been working very diligently, every single one of them, to uh, get ready because they know uh, that things will not just get back to normal immediately. Do we have to wear gloves? No. In fact, you should watch out. Uh, go to the CDC. They have a great website. tells you about all these things. And actually, gloves, you see less and less people wearing them now, unless it's for a one use. You know, So you touch one thing and then get rid of those gloves. But um, you know, in the grocery store, you're wearing gloves, you start touching everything. Um, not an expert, just some of the things I've been reading up on. Uh, yes, get, get people in the habit. You're right. Marilyn, exactly right. I think that's what the government's trying to do, get people in the habit of wearing it, getting, you know, sort of like the, the boot camp, right, what we do every day. Get it just instilled in you so it's just etched in your heart that this is the way it has to be. And keep that mask, get that mask, and... Uh, even if people are out, we're not going to be able to fight with people. I know they're trying to do this out in Boston area, and I don't know if it's working or not, but it's, it's uh, creating a lot of tension. So if you're just watching, um, we do this at 9 in the morning, and then we do this again at 4 in the afternoon. And uh, so we try to bring information to you that is more localized. So we take st state and federal news, and we press releases from everybody that we get all day long, and all the conference calls that we're on, and we try to reduce them all to make some sense of this for you so that you don't have to sit around the television set for eight or 12 hours a day trying to, trying to gather information. So that advisory group is uh, meeting with the lieutenant governor right now and the secretary of economic development. Um, let's see, nursing homes have a, uh, been a hot spot, obviously, and the state has put a strong team in place. They are nearly 60,000 residents in long-term care facilities. 
56% of all deaths have occurred in these facilities. More than 10,000 staff and residents have contracted COVID. And um, as I said this morning, from now on, I don't care if it's flu season, if it's cold season, no matter what it is, um, we will take this uh, more serious. And there should be an ad automatic response during these seasons to help out those in uh, nursing homes. Basically, nursing homes did not have uh, the supplies that they needed while uh, other areas were ramping up. And so, uh, and they have the most vulnerable. They have uh, elderly um, patients and residents who have pre-existing conditions, as we saw uh, on all of our chats here and all the information that we've been able to gather, it is that uh, it's the elderly with pre-existing conditions that have been the victims uh, of this virus. I love to read some of these things. I like how people see each other posting and then they start saying hello. Hi, Susan. Hi, Jody. It's like, you know, kind of cool, right? People are like, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time, or geez, where you been? I didn't know you were around. Anyway, hey, you just join us. We've got bubble wrap. We're just going to wrap us all up in bubble wrap. Got my mask, right, from AIS, triple layer. We got other masks coming either tonight or tomorrow. I have my uh, shirt donated by uh, Turf Tender Landscape. Right? It says keep back six feet, right? Keep your distance. And uh, yeah, we're going to get through this. It's, it's uh, week seven. We're, you know, pat yourself on the, uh, on the back. Some of the banks were open today. Did you know that? I saw um, Bank of America had people inside the lobby today. They had security there and it looked pretty orderly and everybody was wearing masks and keeping their distance, so all good. All right, let's, let's fill you in on. You wanna do some slides back there, guys, real quick? Just because it's helpful and not everybody catches every segment, so maybe yesterday somebody didn't uh, catch it. You can buy those shirts. Uh, I think they sell them down at Ricky's. You know, Ricky's Towing, I think they're selling them down there. So let's go through all these, and we're gonna go right to our little graph kind of showing you. So there, look to the left, that's the, so to the far left is the community of co comparable sizes. The next column is the population. The next column is how many cases they have. And then the next column where you see Lemister at 127 is cases per 100,000. So you can see in Chelsea they have 100, 1,447 cases per 100,000. Um, if you look in, in places like, uh, let's get on to Braintree, they're at 418 cases per 100,000, so obviously they have about uh, 37,000 people. So let's round it off to 40, so that sounds right, right? 570. So you see there's a trend here, and that is the more urban the communities. It'll be interesting now, uh, all of the planners have been pushing for this whole Let's, let's use public transportation. Let's build everything in one dense, densely populated, populated area. Uh, and let's see if that changes because that is and has been uh, by the small I've, I've attended, I don't even know how many smart growth initiatives and how many transit oriented development projects and seminars and webinars and how many people we've sent staff wise to these It'll be very interesting to find out, um, it'll be very interesting to find out if they're gonna continue to push these kinds of projects when we know now that um, traffic is impossible to get in and around the inner city. I strongly suggest, I'll bet you, Boston will be loaded with people driving bicycles. I know people that every day of the working day of the week, uh, they drive from places like Medford or Arlington and drive all the way into Boston, and I mean even in the winter, with their bicycles. And uh, I think you'll see a lot more bicycles, a lot more people walking, and a lot more people reluctant to get into subways and trains and, and uh, buses. So it'll be interesting to see how the planners uh, uh, react towards, towards this. There's a little up and down chart. Interesting enough, now, and I'm not, I, I shouldn't even say it. No, I'm gonna get in trouble. No, I'm gonna say it anyway. So it'd be interesting to see um, cases um, pre everybody had a mask and pro, or when we look back at the numbers and we look at the, the data at uh, March 30th uh, where not so many people wearing masks and they get some more people in that middle part there towards the end of March, beginning of April, and then they got that large amount of people that, um, that 
uh, was the surge, and they're wearing masks. So let's see if there's any connection at all towards that. And of course, it might mean nothing, but uh, we'll see, right? Um, and then also, I think the next piece of information is going to be, OK, you've been wearing that mask. Now what? You've been wearing it for a week. Do you wash it? Uh, do you spray it with something? How effective is it after you spray it? If you wash it, is it as effective as it was? All of these things. So that's next week's news. Week 8, that's what you're going to be hearing about. Let's look at our cases daily and cumulative. As of Thursday, you can see gradually we start in, um, in mid-March towards the middle part of March, and then we start going up, and we have a couple ups and downs, but then we hit that, that surge in April and for a few days, and now it, then it went down, and then it went sort of back up again. Uh, but that tells the story. Testing by date uh, tonight, I, we're not recording today's, but you can see four, almost 14,000. 14,000 people have been tested. That's the most amount ever. They can keep up with that. Then eventually it's going to get to, to us, right? Because they'll do you know, public safety, they'll do uh, health care workers, they'll do the most vulnerable, our, our senior population, those with pre-existing conditions, those that are in the service business, essential workers. And then they'll get to the people like us. And I don't know how long it'll take, but they've done 280,000 people so far. So at the rate of 13,000, if they can do 10,000 seven days a week, right? You got 70,000, you know, three weeks. You got, you know, 15, 20,000, 10 times. Oh, you're, you're up there. You're, you're into the 100,000 mark, right? So if you do 10,000 a day, that's uh, 70,000 times three, that's 210,000. So you're into the hundredth of thousands of people that they can test. So in the next three weeks, two or three weeks, they could double the amount of people that they've tested so far. So that's pretty incredible. Yes, and there'll be instructions. Now we got these masks, we got to learn how to use them, right? The proper protocol. Cases and growth by county. Clearly, I just got to telling you, North Worcester County, we're barely over 1,200 as of yesterday. Um, there's the map. It tells you the whole story right there, right? Uh, the map has changed a little bit. It looks like uh, Norfolk County has done better, uh, but Suffolk and Middlesex and Essex and Plymouth uh, not done so well. But you can see in the more remote areas of the state, once you get out to like Bernardston and, and Lee Mass and Stockbridge and some of those places, uh, it's, it's almost uh, non-existent. And then you get down to Bonsable. I'm not suggesting yet everybody heads to that part of the state this weekend, but uh, those are the numbers. Hospitalizations. Average uh, hospitalization right now is at 3,800. I wouldn't doubt if we went up, you know, if it's still at 6% of 38. Yeah, probably bordering on 4,000 at this particular point. Uh, do have, I think, 6,000. I have double the amount of ICU beds and in, in, in intensive care, um, acute care f uh, beds across the state. So that puts them, you know, right at what they said, around 56% of, uh, you know, the hospitals are, are empty at this particular point. So those are all good numbers just to watch. I don't know how many people are numbers there, but... Um, numbers people, but it is what it is, and these we'll be looking at for a long time to make some sense at. Deaths and confirmed cases, again, if that uh, continues to go up the way it has, uh, we're at 35, 62, and they went up 100-something today, say 150, 174, I think it was a little more than that, 170, so now they're bordering around 3,700, um, heading to 4,000, so we'll have to watch those numbers. Uh, they have come down in the last couple days. Yesterday was a, uh, certainly a case in point of the uh, fact that it done down. The average age for te those testing positive is 54. The average age of those hospitalized is 69 years old. And look at the spike, almost nothing on the uh, left-hand side by age group. And then if you do it by 100,000, not, 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 nothing much changes until you hit that 70 group, 70 age group, and then all of a sudden, there you are, right up there at... Uh, 776 people per 100,000, the average age, 82 years old. And is our death by county. Uh, go back to the map I showed you, the shaded map. Uh, it's consistent with that as well. Deaths by sex, I didn't mean that, but deaths by male, female, pretty much uh, the same deaths with a previous hospitalization, 57.7, so say 58%. 
and then deaths with underlying conditions at 98%. So not much has changed on that. That's been pretty consistent uh, right along. If you want to know how many patients are at Health Alliance, they've last time they reported, they were at 23 patients and four in ICU uh, as a result of COVID. So thank you for that information. That's extremely helpful. Oh, I was just going to show you. Can you guys give me a shot of this? Just as a matter of historic portions today. See, I don't know, can you guys zoom in on that from there? There you go. That's better. So um, for those who maybe have moved here recently or maybe don't know, but um, Buckskin Sam is not just a sort of comic book character or a, a face of the dime novel. Uh, Buckskin Sam is a real person. Yeah, his name was Samuel J, Samuel A. Hall. He is, um, grew up on the Hall uh, farm, which is where Carter Junior High School is right now, where the new housing development is. Uh, they owned probably most of the property uh, for farming in the uh, Hall Street area, West Street between Hall and, and, and Merriam Ave. Um, Samuel Hall was, uh, had uh, lots of energy, and he was sort of the uh, odd person out in the family. Uh, everyone worked on the farm, but he had, as I said, more energy. As the story is told, as I understand it, and I'm not reading from anything right now to be able to tell you, but he, um, after the crops were grown, there was a pretty sizable, what would we know, t what we today would call it a farmer's market in Fitchburg where uh, goods were uh, ch exchanged, sold, and traded. And uh, Samuel, because he had so much energy, it was very difficult to keep him um, focused. He would uh, be sent with um, all of the goods, and he would go to Fitchburg, where um, the uh, co-op would take place and the exchange and the sale of things. Well, uh, Samuel Hall um, took up with a young lady that he had eyes for, and they um, developed a friendship, but because um, Mr. Hall um, was probably noticeably <laughs> excitable in terms of his energy amount, uh, oftentimes uh, maybe doing things that didn't seem traditional, uh, he was, uh, uh, she, his, his, his uh, f lady friend, was discouraged from continuing to see uh, Sam. So, Later on, Sam Hall uh, decided to leave Leominster and uh, experimented with alcohol uh, as, a, as a young teenager, young adult, and he left with a gentleman by the name, I think, of Joe Booth. And uh, they went off into, um, I think, work on some cargo ships. Somehow or another, they landed uh, later on during the Wild Wild West, they ended up uh, hooking up with uh, legends like uh, Buffalo Bill and Wild Bill Cody and, uh, uh, let's see, Kit Carlson. And uh, he developed the name Buckskin Sam. So uh, at one particular point, and you can find in the history books here in Leominster, um, you can find the rest of the story. And I'm doing this all off the top of my head, so... Um, just go along with the, the Dean Mazzarella <laughs> version of Buckskin Sam. But um, Buckskin Sam uh, uh, consumed quite a bit of alcohol. And uh, one day, he and Kit Carlson rode back into Leominster. Uh, his family was not very proud of his new calling and his new fame. And so he came into to Leominster and, uh, with Kit Carlson. And that was a big deal. That would be like coming to Leominster in the 1960s with the cast of Gunsmoke. Some of you are too young for that, but I'm sure you've seen the reruns or heard about it. Or it would be um, equivalent coming into town with um, John Travolta or something, right? You, you just, it, it, Donnie Wahlberg or somebody like that. So he rode into town and every kid, you know, people congregated on the common and every kid went out of their mind when they saw these beautiful horses and, and the buckskin uh, uniform and costume that he, he wore, and Kit Carlson. I mean, this is, like the, this is like the biggest thing that's probably happened here. And uh, so the, in the common, where you see the firefighters memorial, 
that was um, that was the town hall slash school slash a bunch of things because we weren't you know, we didn't have a big population we just had lots of farms and so um, they'll have a meeting inside as the story is told and Kit Carlson and uh, Buckskin Sam pull up and the kids are just out of their minds and uh, with excitement and they want to know if they can lead I think it was like the fourth of July parade and of course everyone had a triple panic attack and they said no and of course Buckskin Sam couldn't go back and stay with his family so he stayed in a hotel downtown and then later on as the story's told uh, Buckskin Sam consumed more alcohol than he should have he was a very um, thin man he didn't weigh very much at all had a acne problem on his face and uh, just probably didn't fit in with the you know the rest of the conformed world and uh, went back later on he um, hooked up with a gentleman that was a evangelist that used to uh, do tent revivals and um, as the story is told uh, this evangelist uh, went on a, a um, went on on tour um, had a wife and some kids and uh, we don't know what happened to him if he uh, died or was killed or but he never came back uh, buckskin Sam ended up sort of stepping in to help the family uh, he later ended up in uh, Delaware he uh, at the time dime novels were like comic books uh, those are the things that young teenagers would re would read their kid their parents forbid them for, from reading these things so they would do hide them under their mattresses or hide them in the tree houses somewhere in the woods and they would read these horribly written stories by Buckskin Sam and uh, uh, Wild Bill Cody and Buffalo Bill and Kit Carlson and there was story after story after story and they were uh, called Bead uh, was the promoter he was the writer he was the ghost writer and he would take these stories and he would uh, turn them into um, you know stories and they would sell these dime novels and this is the cover of one of the dime novels later on um, Buckskin Sam would pass away um, he had very little uh, f funds uh, the he was put on a train in I believe Delaware by uh, the mayor he arrived here by train at where is now Depot Square where you see the uh, Russell's package store is that Russell's uh, he was uh, 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 taken off that train he was uh, brought to um, he was brought to Evergreen Cemetery where he's buried uh, right after um, Hathaway Memorial that first section I'd say the if you went a hundred feet um, north of Hathaway's and then go a hundred feet deep you will find a tombstone and the tombstone says um, Samuel J Hall and I believe it says captain or major Samuel J Hall now the other part of the equation is during the war uh, he was on the south he was in the south at the time uh, but Samuel Hall um, says you know according to his documentation and story says that he was in the south but he was a, star, a spy for the north where his heart and his soul and his real true beginnings um, came from so um, he was given the name Major Samuel J. Hall and there was a national listen to this a national urban uh, no a um, sign of kind of like Snope it was said and believed that he wasn't recognized as somebody in the military that he was really a spy so as the myth went that each and every Memorial Day his um, his tombstone was not flagged so as soon as I read that and Memorial Day came I ran to the cemetery I ran down to his monument where uh, you can find it still there and every year uh, he does have a flag for Memorial Day Major Samuel J Saul Hall uh, aka Buck Skin Sam so that's the story of Buck Skin Sam so someday we'll put a little monument or something to recognize the fact that uh, he was a, was a big deal at the time um, and we still you know there's still uh, old western magazines that you can get I think um, Tractor Supply sells them in some bookstores and there's still stories you can find occasionally Buckskin Sam's name pops up but you can still find old stories about Buffalo Bill and there's still a big interest in that and uh, I bet you didn't know it but Buckskin Sam was from right here in Lemonster, Massachusetts 01453 Samuel Hall Hall Street
Okay, let's get back to business here. Enough of this story stuff, right? Enough of this story stuff. And that's my, my um, sort of read on it. That You may Google it and find out this is a completely different story, but that's my story and I'm sticking to it. And go down and see Samuel Hall's. If you think about who's in our cemeteries, how interesting it is from the old revolution cemetery, the Civil War cemetery, uh, Joe Palmer, who was persecuted for wearing a beard. So much history. We're always seeing people at our, our cemeteries. And, uh, well, that's a whole other subject for a whole other day. But let's go to testing sites tomorrow. If you need to be tested and you have symptoms, you've got to have symptoms. You don't need a doctor's note. You go to Health Alliance in Lummis that signs as soon as you pull it off of Mouth Main Street, uh, 10 to 2 o'clock p.m., okay? So that's uh, until Monday, and then Monday it's 8 to 4. They do about 60 tests a day over at Health Alliance. Um, all athletic fields are closed, sporting activities, tennis courts are now closed, and, but all parks and recreation areas are open, but don't use things like climby things and, and other equipment. Until further notice, uh, on Saturdays, the transfer station is closed, Starburst has moved back to the 22nd, uh, Board of Health have has to cancel the, re uh, the recycling day, but we're still going to try to do that. Hats off to the uh, emergency management, they've been helping to deliver food to students all during the week. That's all be being done by volunteers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you couldn't pay your tax bill today, uh, we're giving you to June 1st, but if you can, please do. That takes to us sweating the whole thing out as to whether or not we'll make it through uh, another couple of months. And uh, if you have bills that are due after March 10th, then you got to June 30th with no extra fees. If you'd like to mail your um, bills, you can um, bill them to City Hall, 25 West Street. If you want to use the internet, um, at lemister-ma.gov, you could pay your bills. Uh, and also, you can do it the old-fashioned way. Um, I like to buy stamps at the post office. They have some cool stamps. And uh, so, anyway, you can mail it in. I walked mine in today, well, because I work there. Comcast, essential service. Um, I described a little while ago, we gave some computers out today. If you know somebody, that uh, student, that would otherwise never have, and this is for any Lemonster student, not just Lemonster school, uh, el elementary students, uh, public school, these are any Lemonster students, if you live here, and otherwise would never have a chance to get an uh, electronic device, um, just call us, we'll hook you up. Comcast Essentials Program Extended. If you do not have internet through Comcast, but you qualify, call them, 855-846-8376, and uh, they will, yes, hook you up. And it's free for two months, and then $99.95 after that. Grocery store, oh, tomorrow's going to be interesting at uh, places like Home Depot and those places because they're open, and I'm sure those lines will be long. But uh, find out from somebody when the lines uh, sort of narrow down and scale down uh, you'll be happy you did. Stimulus checks are coming. Uh, next week, if you haven't received it, uh, just go in and you know, Google IRS, haven't got my check, 2020 stimulus check, and a bunch of information is going to pop up. Uh, we're getting towards Memorial Day. It is May 1st. Uh, we are going to have some, act we're going to have activities. We're going to visit every cemetery. Some of us will make sure we visit every single one. We don't know the extent of it, where we'll be in the, another month, but we guarantee you that every single cemetery will be flagged and we guarantee you that every cemetery will be visited by us. We just don't know as to how many people we can invite to these uh, events. So May 7th coming up next week, that is thank you first responders and all essential workers day and it's our day of thanks. It's also national day of prayer. So uh, we have a number of things lined up. Think about how you'd like to get involved. Keep a social distance, right? You can make some signs, a lot of things we can do. We're asking the churches to ring their bells at a certain time. Fire whistles, bells, you name it. Um, this is a day of thanks, and it is May 7th. Yardways, get those leaves picked up. This could be a perfect weekend to get those leaves picked up. Don't wait for a windy day. Don't wait for that windy day when you can't get out there and it's uh, too windy, and then it's, we have a bunch of rain again, and then you can't get them up. Get them up. Get them piled up, and then, um, yeah, and then... Get yourself some bags, get them in bags, take a picture, send them to me, and we'll enter you into the contest, and you can win a bunch of cool prizes. Lummis, the numbers are in. 116 cases, that's up four from yesterday. Remember, more testing, and we're going to get more test positives. 105. Now, here's the number. See, that's the number we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to that level where we have as many new cases 
and, and as many, I mean, not as many new cases, but as many active cases as there are non-active. So today there are 105 uh, completed, meaning they are off of um, social distancing and self-quarantine. So now they've been seven days with no symptoms, so they are free to go with a mask. And uh, that's up seven, and only four cases up from yesterday. So that is a huge step in the right direction. Let's let's hope that that continues on. Um, what? It's raining out in North Lemonster? Only in North Lemonster. Nowhere else. And don't forget, if we go to that last slide real quick, um, don't forget the 26th and 27th, is it? We have the uh, 26th and 27th of June. Restaurants, uh, all kinds of retailers, Lemister business. We're having a Lemister old-fashioned, old-fashioned sidewalk sale, bargain days. So stay tuned for more information on that. Okay, those are the numbers. Um, you've got them fresh right here. Um, just came out. 116 cases in Lemonster, and that's uh, four up from yesterday, but it is leveling off. That's a good thing, but we are getting seven new cases of those that are coming off. So uh, let's hope that's the trend, and thank you. I know it's been a busy week for you. Um, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. It's very helpful for, for me to share this information because I know you share it, and when misinformation gets out there of no you know, of, of, of nobody's fault, you, you can jump right in and, and uh, you know, trade a slide. So everything we shared today is on our website at lemister-ma.gov. I want to thank everybody here at LTV. Thank you to 95.1 FM. You can also watch this and listen to this over uh, later and watch this later. But we're out of time. Thank you to all those in emergency uh, services, uh, first responders, um, and those in the medical industry and all of you who are essential workers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 9.